Hello to you, I do hope you're well. I'm Ben Wardle and in this short video, I'm going to share my advice on revising for GCSE RS in order to achieve the top marks and secure a grade nine. So in this video, I'm going to talk you through my five step program for GCSE RS revision in order to secure that grade nine. And number one is to create a revision list. Number two is to create a summary page for each topic on your revision list. Number three is to then complete past paper questions and then self-assess them using the exam board mark scheme or submit them to a teacher for them to mark. Number four is to teach somebody else the content. And then number five is to test yourself regularly. So in this short video, I'm going to talk through each of these five steps. So hopefully by the end, you feel informed and inspired to go out and achieve great things in GCSE RS. So number one is to create a revision list. This is really important because I know I'm stating the obvious, but it's so important we know what we need to be revising. And the most effective way to effectively revise everything is to start by creating or printing off a revision list. So my advice is to go on the exam board website and print off the specification. This sets out every topic that could come up on the exam. So it's really handy and really helpful to have because it means when you are revising, you do not miss out any important topics. So then you won't get caught out by any questions in the exam. So head over to the exam board website and print off the specification or your teachers might have already done that for you. And then make sure when you are revising, you have got that revision list in front of you because then you can use it to check for any gaps in your knowledge and to make sure that you have covered every topic that could come up. So you might then, for example, like to highlight any topics that you don't feel confident about so that you know to focus on them in your revision. And then you might actually like to pick one topic each day to revise and then literally tick it off when you have done so. But what's important with your revision list is that you don't just print it off at the start of your revision and then forget all about it. Make sure that whenever you revise for GCSERS, you get your revision list, you get the specification out in front of you and you continuously refer back to it because it will ensure you don't miss out any topics and it means that you can plan your revision really strategically, which will help you to be really effective and be really productive when it comes to managing your time and completing your revision. So number one is to create a revision list and then use that in terms of planning and doing your revision. Number two then is to create a summary page for each topic. So for each topic on the specification, my advice is to create an A4 summary page. Now it is up to you how you do this. As long as you have got one page for each topic, that is the most important thing. So for example, you might do this as a mind map, you might do this as a poster with lots of different colours and visuals if that's your style of learning. Or you might do it as a PowerPoint slide if you actually prefer to type things up on your laptop. But what's important is that you include the key information you're going to need for the exam. So make sure you include on there definitions of keywords for that topic, key quotes for that topic. Remember, so important for question four and five. Make sure that you've got different views on there. So the views of different denominations. Make sure that you've got explanations on there. So make sure you're explaining the influence of that topic in terms of beliefs and teachings and also the importance of that topic. So, you know, why is forgiveness important for Christians or why is salvation important for Christians? So make sure that your summary page contains all the essential information you need to know for the exam. Make sure that you also include your AO2 evaluation points because remember, question five is always going to ask us to evaluate a statement. So you need to be ready for a question five on any topic. So make sure on your summary page, you include your evaluation points that you would use in a 12 marker on that topic. My advice is to use different colours and highlighters for visual impact. So you might use one colour pen for definitions, for example, and then another colour for key quotes. And my advice is to be consistent in that. So if you're going to do blue for keywords, 
then use blue for keywords on every summary page. And if you're then going to write um, key quotes in red, for example, use that color coding consistently on every single summary page. It's all about making your revision more efficient and more effective. My advice would also be to create flashcards as well. So you're going to have your summary page, but you might then also have your smaller flashcards as well, because they will be very helpful in terms of getting the key information written down, because you can then just flip through them as part of your ongoing revision. So step number two is to create a summary page for each topic. And on that page, you need to include the key information, the keywords, the key quotes, the views of different denominations, explanations of the influence, if it's a belief or teaching, and then, of course, explanations of the importance of that topic. Number three, then, is to complete past paper practice questions. It's really important that you are then applying all of that key knowledge to past paper questions. So make sure you do past paper questions for every topic and make sure you are doing those for your question three, four and five when you are asked to explain and, of course, evaluate. And this is all about getting familiar with the structure of the questions and how our exam board expect us to apply all of our knowledge. The more practice questions you do, the better. So, you know, familiarize yourself with the grade nine structure for each question. The questions are always worded the same. The topic just changes. So this is really, really beneficial for us because what we can do is we can develop a structure for our answers and then we can just change it depending on the topic we are being asked about. So please do have a look at my videos on how to answer the paper one questions in order to develop your grade nine structures. Make sure that you are therefore printing off past paper questions from the exam board websites or of course, taking them from the textbook. And then you can either do this as an open book activity or a closed book activity. So for example, you might do this open book. So you actually do the past paper questions using your class notes, your textbook, and your one page summary. So you might literally have your notes in front of you and then practice transferring that knowledge into a grade nine exam answer. But what you also need to do is practice doing this closed book as well, because that, of course, will help to develop your recall skills. So you want to close your books, put your textbooks away and actually then have a go at completing questions under exam style conditions. What you should then do after you've actually answered the questions is mark them yourself using the exam board mark schemes. And my advice would be to get a different colour. So get a red pen, for example, and then actually add corrections or extra information based on what the exam board mark scheme says. So then actually read back through your answer with the exam board mark scheme next to you and then make any amendments or add additional information. Or, and this is another great thing to do, ask your teacher to mark them for you. So actually hand them in to your teacher and say, please, could you mark these for me and give me some feedback? I'm aiming for a grade nine. I am determined to get full marks on each question. And then when they have given you that feedback, make sure you then make any improvements that they've suggested. So then actually have a go at completing those questions again with those improvements made. And you might even then give that back to your teacher and ask them to remark it because this process, getting into the habit of redrafting and improving really helps you prepare for the exam so that when you write your answers in the exam, they are going to be perfection. So yes, really spend some time. It only has to be a few minutes every evening, but it will add up and it will be really beneficial for you. Spending that time doing your past paper practice questions where you're getting a feel for the style of question that will be asked and you are getting into the habit of applying all of your grade nine knowledge to the exam paper questions. Number four, then, is to teach somebody else the content. And this is really important because teaching somebody else the content that you're studying will help you to secure the information in your memory. And psychologists have found that teaching something to someone else helps you to remember it. So 
find somebody. It could be a family member or a friend, or it could even be yourself if you want to film a video or record a podcast, for example, and teach them the topic. So you might expect explain a key concept to them. So you might explain salvation to them, or you might explain contrasting views about something to them. So you might give them the contrasting views on euthanasia, for example. And my advice is to be as creative as you can. So you might film a video, you might create a worksheet, which you can then complete yourself later, or you might create a podcast that teaches a topic. So I advise you to imagine that you are teaching this topic to somebody with no pre-existing knowledge about it. You've got to think, how will I explain this to them so that it makes sense and so that they remember it? So make sure you tell them about the key quotes, the contrasting views, the influences, for example. Teach them everything they'd need to know if they were sitting the exam. So think like a teacher and act like a teacher. Have a go at teaching somebody else the content. It is a great way to secure this knowledge in your long-term memory so that you can then recall it in your GCSE RS exam. And then finally, it's so important, number five, to regularly test yourself. So make sure you test yourself or of course, get somebody to test you using the revision list. So we're going all the way back to step one here, and we're going to use the specification in order to test ourselves. So here's the fun activity you might like to try. Take a blank sheet of paper and give yourself 60 seconds to write down everything you can remember about a topic. So literally get a blank sheet of A4, write salvation in the middle, and then give yourself 60 seconds to write down everything you can remember about the topic. You could also create worksheets, puzzles or quizzes that you can then complete yourself, you know, so set the questions yourself and then a few weeks later have a go at answering them. The same with like a word search or a crossword, for example, where the clues are the definitions for keywords, which can then be found in the word search, for example. So make sure you test yourself on the keywords. Can you define each one? Test yourself on recalling a key quote for each topic. Test yourself on the influences of each belief and teaching. Test yourself on contrasting practices. Test yourself on similar and contrasting views for the themes paper, of course. And keep on testing yourself because the more you test yourself, the stronger your recall in the exam will be. So keep testing yourself. Keep recalling that information and secure it in your long term memory ahead of the exam. And all that's left is for me to wish you the very best of luck with your revision and exams. Believe in yourself, be confident and aim for the top. Very best wishes to you. Have a good day. Bye bye.